uh, we were rehearsing this morning uh, with the band, and I was like, I just checked the time, you know, I was like, dude, I'm so late, and I just uh, came running uh, to my place, so yeah. Oh, no problem at all. Well, I wanted to start off by saying congratulations on this album. It is an absolutely amazing album, so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, bro. I appreciate it. It it sounds like on this album that you guys wanted to try so many different things. Can you tell us a little bit about what your aims and your goals were when you first sat down to work on this album? Okay. Yeah. Uh, When we wrote Asthma, it was my first uh, record with Persephone. Uh, Because just I joined um, like two years before recording the album. And I wasn't that uh, comfortable writing music, um, but with this album, I mean, we've toured a lot and we know each other perfectly now, you know, uh, we're in writing music. And so the standards were obviously top of the previous albums, like always, yep. but I, I also wanted to get um, a distance from the previous ones and especially spiritual migration. Because I didn't wrote that album, you know, and I, I, I didn't want to make a second version of an album. So uh, we wanted to improve a lot of uh, the recording too, because um, we learn a lot, you know, every time we record. Here in Andorra, there's nobody to just uh, uh, learn, you know. So uh, we make mistakes and we learn and, and then we, can, we improve ourselves. Um, and we also wanted to, uh, to make a darker album. Asma was super bright and peaceful, and this one, uh, we wanted to go really dark to to a deep uh, version of Persephone. And yeah, and we also included a lot of new sounds that we didn't use on the previous record. Like, I think the experience is really uh, cinematographic, you know, when you listen to the whole album. It's like uh, listening to a movie. Because you can watch the album, obviously, but that, that is what we wanted, you know, to have an experience. You said that you wanted to be darker on this album. Was there was there a reason for that? Was that the mood of the band at the time? It wasn't the mood. I don't know why we chose that path. In, in a way, yes, because we also... Uh, usually we write music and then we find the title for the album and then we... We work on the artwork and cover, you know, but this time it was so, so different. We just started the first song and I, and I, I watch a Instagram post, you know, with the cover of the new old Persephone album, Metanoia. And I was like, dude, this has to be the new cover. I have to contact this artist and just buy the art, you know, and talk with him. And, and so before writing the album, we already had the cover and like a few days later, I found the title, you know, Metanoia, and I started reading about this, and it was like everything was like uh, falling into pieces, you know, and it was so dark, and the meaning was uh, way darker than Asthma, you know, and it was like, dude, I think we have to go this way now, you know, and and to do something different, we we, we didn't want to do Asthma part two, you know, yep, that's, that's yep. the reason. How do you put yourself into that dark frame of mind to write music if everything in life is going really well? Like, is that a difficult kind of thing to weigh up and achieve? Yeah, well, life isn't always great, you know? Yeah. Actually, even if, even if our lyrics, you know, are uh, to, to uh, you know, think about it and do a... Um, uh, fuck, I'm, I'm trying to find the right word. Um it's an introspect lyrics, you know, to know yourself better and to, to carry on, you know, and to continue uh, with everything, with all the daily struggles. We always have daily struggles, so we cannot be positive all the times. Even if our lyrics try to, you know, help or find some inner peace, uh, we have fucked up days too. And so... Uh, Obviously, I, I, we cannot complain, you know, life is good too, obviously. I don't want to sound like now, like if everything was uh, sad, but I don't know, man. It, it just happened when we are writing together and we are so much focused on doing it at, at this point, you know, 
because uh, we don't have all the time on the day, you know, to write music because we work, we have daily jobs and we just can meet some days during the week. And so we cannot lose focus there. So we are just, okay, music has to be darker. Let's go there, you know. Yeah. How difficult was it for you guys to all get together during the pandemic? Because like I know for us here, we've had lockdowns and we've been in and out of lockdowns the entire time. Was it difficult for you guys to get together to work on this album? Yeah. I mean, Andorra is a really small country, you know, so from each other's place, maybe it's 10 minute drive, 15, 20 at the top. Um, the problem was like everyone, everyone was like locked down in his place, and we cannot write music uh, with this distance. You know, I cannot write music with my computer and just send files, because it doesn't work like this for us. It's so complicated to write music for us that just send him um, demos, you know, or just raw, uh, raw ideas. It's it's not possible to us. So. Um, during the time we were like really um, uh, locked at, at our homes, uh, we just stopped working on the album. You know, we started. We had to. We do music classes, like most of the band are music teachers. So we had to continue with our jobs. You know, doing uh, classes uh, from the computer. You know, and like this. And once the the heavy lockdown was over, we started meeting uh, again. But uh, uh, I was telling you that we can only meet like two days in a week, you know, and only the mornings. That's why we took so long to write the album too. Yeah. You mentioned before that when you first joined the band, you felt uncomfortable songwriting. What do you feel has changed over the last couple of years? Because you seem more comfortable with songwriting now. Mm. Uh, uh, I was a Persephone fan myself before joining the band, obviously. We were super close friends, Carlos and I our best friends since we know each other but um, uh, one thing is being friends and listening to the music and the other one is writing the next Persephone album you know my skills weren't that good back then I already played in a metal band and we recorded two albums but it was so so different the um, the focus we need on Persephone and the the amount of work and hard work and hours, it's incredible. And I wasn't used to that, you know? And since I joined the band, I was like, okay, I want full power here, you know? I want to do everything because I'm good at other stuff and I want to be involved in many things possible. So I think uh, I just get used to be around them in the studio situation, you know, because it's a lot of pressure when we are there, because it's, okay, time is running, we only have like three hours and we have to write the best song, the best Persephone song today. And so we also prepare ourselves a little bit before going to the to the studio, you know, we, we learn new tricks, new tricks, you know, we learn new stuff as a musicians. And we, we, yeah, I think we connect better right now. We we talk a lot, we communicate way better, and that way we can write better music. Yeah, definitely. You also mentioned before about the band trying different things with this album than they ever tried before. Tell us a little bit about what kind of things you guys wanted to try with this album and, and how you went about doing that. Mm. We, we didn't want to, uh, to use the same keyboard sounds. I think one of the things that... Um, um, makes us uh, different from other bands is that we use a keyboard, obviously, in the, the, the death metal. It's like really weird. That's why we are on this limbo death metal progressive music, melodic, other tags and labels. And so we wanted to go full cinematic, as I told you. Uh, Carlos and Mo, the keyboard player, they have this company that they write music for movies and video games. So they have a lot of experience on that. And we were trying to incorporate the best things of um, uh, soundtracks to our music. It's like we, we want to go heavier and darker, but without using the elements we use usually. So there's a lot of sounds that you will probably hear on movie trailers or just movie uh, soundtracks. We also got uh, seven string guitars, which is uh, heavier and darker. And so I think the mix of that, that stuff uh, helped a lot to, um, to the 
sound of the album. We got better also on songwriting. I think we analyze way better songs. You know, every part has a meaning, and then if we repeat the chorus of a song, it's for a meaning because we have to go to another place. So everything is like really um, analyzed before. You mentioned before that this album sounds very cinemagraphic, and I agree with that completely. And you just mentioned soundtracks again. Now, do you guys often use films or use soundtracks as an inspiration when you're working on an album? And if so, what are some of your favorite movies and soundtracks? Yeah, definitely. I mean, for 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 references, uh, Mo can talk a lot. I mean, he only listens to soundtracks, actually. You know, he's not metal at all. And he's, like, used to work with a computer and, and other directors, you know, and so he knows what he's doing all the time. He's a really good um, arrangist, you know. He can rearrange the songs and improve all the sections, adding new sounds. So, uh, talking about soundtracks, I know we, uh, we listen uh, a lot to the... Um, uh, interstellar uh, soundtrack and we also talk a lot about Blade Runner not only for the music but with all the aesthetic you know we like this uh, cyberpunk future and with all these glitches sounds you know and and like not airplanes you know but uh, spaceship sounds and, and all the stuff and video games a lot we we listen to a lot of the uh, Doom's uh, soundtrack, the video game, uh, from Mick Gordon's, and for one of the tracks called uh, "Aware of Being No Leap of Faith," uh, we we got a lot of inspiration from the movie uh, Twenty Eight Days Later. Ah, oh, yes, one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. If you listen to the track to uh, "Leap of Faith" and then you listen to the original soundtrack from that movie you will see the same structure, you know, like it's it's a long crescendo with a really uh, small melody on guitar in our place and, and then it explodes and, a lot of, and, and then it goes another time really low to get another time exploding, you know, that's the, the trick we use for this track. Awesome. Well, and we also got yeah. a bit of a, a look at your vinyl collection recently in a video yeah. as well. <laughs> Um, and one of the things that really surprised me was there was not a lot of metal in there. Do you think that's something that actually enhances your songwriting, though? Because you do listen to so many different genres of music that you can then bring the best of that into your own music. Yeah, I don't want to say that myself, you know, because maybe it's a little bit uh, pretentious. But I think listening to a lot of music allows me, you know, to, to go different in some ways. Obviously, my drumming is also really metal when the when the when i have to go metal i can go really metal but i really love uh, bringing space you know to the riffs that carlos brings me and obviously i listen to metal but not that much you know when i'm teaching drums in the music school for i don't know six hours and then i got home I don't want to listen to any harsh drums or vocals, you know, screaming to my face because I'm so tired that I need another type of music. So maybe, maybe Carlos always says that, that what you said, you know, that, that I don't listen to much metal, even if I know all the new albums that come and all the new bands and singles and whatever, because I like to be updated with, with music. But I think that allows me to go different in some parts. Definitely. So now with the album coming out, what are the plans for the band? Uh, and where are you with the pandemic? Are you able to get out and play shows again now? We had a tour with Obscura uh, last November. It was uh, postponed to September this year. And we were also working on a tour this April and it got even cancelled before announcing it. It was like we were working hard on this and we already had the package and everything and it was great. And then our booking agent was like, guys, we cannot tour in April. Everything is fucked up again. So we will have some festivals now, really, really few, because the festivals that were cancelled the year before, they're keeping the same bands for this year, obviously. So there are no few, there are no spots available. And so we will go on tour with Obscura, 
in September in Europe, and then we are working on a tour in October, November in the in the US. Awesome. Well, we hope we get to see you in Australia one day as well, because um, hopefully we yeah. would love to see you live. Yeah, I'm, uh, our manager is from Melbourne, so um, I think we will go there. We, he he offered us to play there. Uh, three years ago but it was really in a bad time to do it but uh but we will definitely go to australia because uh, we, we we really want to play as much as places possible so sure definitely and melbourne's my hometown as well so yeah, we would really? definitely love Bro, to see you play yeah. here yeah how is the situation there right now um it, it's kind of weird it's a weird kind of time because omnicron kind of hit really really hard but with yeah. the, like we had high numbers of people catching it, but not very many people yeah. dying from it or even having going having to go to hospital. So it's kind of I been hear. really strange. But live music is still not back. But then you can go to a football and a cricket game and have thirty thousand people sitting in the audience. Okay. So like in Spain. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's like in Spain they have these massive uh, football stadiums, you know, with Barcelona and everything, and then no gigs. Or just thirty percent of the venue, and it's like, dude, I cannot pay a full rent and then just half of the people, you know? Yeah. So, like, I was talking to a mate today who was in a band, and his gig got cancelled, and they would have only had five hundred people there tops. But at the same day that his gig gets cancelled, we get told that the Australian Open tennis final tomorrow <laughs> is now allowed it's... to have forty thousand people. So, yeah, it's it's really really weird, but. Yeah, it's been uh, yeah. it's been more the weather here over the last couple of days. We've had really really hot weather but storms at the same time. So, yeah, everyone's just like absolutely sick and tired of the heat and just wants wants it to cool down. So, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Hopefully soon, man. Hopefully. I don't, yeah. I don't get why in the states they can do gigs and tours and now in UK too, but then, you know, most of Europe it's impossible and then Australia too, Japan also, it's yeah. the borders are closed, and it's like, dude, yeah. we start well, I think, again. I think that's the hard part here to have shows at the moment, is we've still got one state who have what they call a hard border with the rest of the country. It's like they're a separate okay. country at the moment. So, yeah, it's really hard okay. to do tours just because there's so many different rules about going over borders into different states. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, well, Hopefully it will finish. Yeah, and soon, man. Definitely. Well, mate, to finish up, what would you like to say to everybody out there before they sit down to take a listen to this amazing new album? Uh, listen to the album uh, with um, <laughs> with the best uh, sound quality you can. Please don't don't <laughs> don't look at the cheapest version, okay? And just don't play the album with the speakers of your cell phone. That's the only thing I'm asking. Because we've paid so much attention to all the sounds, you know, and effects and, and um, panoramic, you know, that I really love when people can just listen the album completely, you know. When I, when I read a book, I don't just, you know, change pages and then just skip some. And so just take a, take a seat and listen the whole album, please. Definitely. Well, mate, I want to say thank you.